right, guys. Good afternoon. I brought it. It's happening. The mop is going away. If you see me out, this is what you'll see. Don't be laughing at me. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> did she have me in the summer class? There was somebody who had me in the summer class, and we I wore bandanas just about every day. Oh, oh, tell her I'm sorry. All right, so you guys were supposed to do this problem that's empty. Did you do it? Anybody do it? Can you do it? What's the difference in this problem and the other PV equals NRT problem? In other words, what's the difference in the empty one versus the one we did Monday? There's no moles, so what is there? In place of moles, what is there? Grams, which means what do you have to do? Convert it to moles. You have to convert it to moles. So somewhere to the side, you need to do 25 grams to moles of CO2, which is good practice for your exam. Tonight is going to be different than most of our time together because you're going to be doing a lot of things on your own, and I'm going to be waiting. And then I'll come back and check you and also do them with you or for you. So, go ahead and do this one. I found your cat. Okay. Somewhere on the side, I'm going to go ahead and do 25 grams, 44.01 grams per one mole. Anybody else get that? Can I round this number that I get for the answer? It's a yes or no question. No. Why? It's not the final answer. That's why. It's not the final answer. So, I get a long number and I can't do anything with it but write it all down. So, 0 0.568 moles. Anyone else get that? What's my equation that I'm going to use to do this? PV equals NRT, and yes, I heard somebody say you've got to convert to Celsius, and you're right. So 37 plus 273 is 310 Kelvin. Now plug it in. So one atmosphere times Volume equals 0.56805272 moles, and I'm going to run out of room here, it looks like, times 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin, and I'm going to just throw in a times up here, 310 Kelvin. I apologize for being on the border there. So all of these get multiplied together, yes or no? Yes. To get volume, what do we do? We multiply all these together and then what? Divide, Divide by one. So I'm going to go ahead and show this work. More than anything, I do this to show units canceling. So atmosphere cancel, moles cancel, Kelvin cancels, and my final answer then is what? 14.5 liters. 14.5 liters. Yes or no? Yes. Talk to me, guys. Did you watch the video? The audio cut off. But the rest of it should have been there. Did the rest, the rest of it not there? It like turned completely off. It's only like an hour and 30 
Oh, did you know they did that, Travis? Yes, she said that they cut off the whole after the audio stopped. The video too? But did the video stop too? Completely? Oh. Make a note to tell him not to do that again. <laughs> well, for your benefit, there is another video on Blackboard that was made by my magic hand in my studio with perfect person talking very slowly, and it's only on gas laws, so you can watch it. And it's all about gas laws. But the basics of what you missed, you missed a lot of gas laws, but the basics of this problem is that you know to use PV equals NRT because it said something about mass or moles. Then you use PV equals NRT. That's how we knew to use this equation. This equation we actually did first Monday because it's simpler in the sense that it already had moles given to you, so it was obvious it was PV equals NRT. N is a gas constant. Look at the previous page of notes. It's at the bottom. I'm sorry, N is not the constant. I apologize. N is the number of moles. R is the gas constant. N is the number of moles. But if you look at the previous page, it shows you that at the bottom, okay? Other questions on this problem? If you were here yes, Monday, does this make sense? This is, okay. All right, then let's move on. Dalton's law of partial pressures is the last gas law that we, it's actually the last of the material for this section. And it is simple. So I'm going to write it down for you, and then we'll talk about it. Dalton's law of partial pressures deals only with pressures. First of all, get that. It only deals with pressures. So if you have a question that only has pressures, it's probably a Dalton's law of partial pressures problem. And it says the total pressure, the total pressure of a mixture of gases is the sum of the pressures in the mix. The total pressure of a mixture of gases is the sum of the pressures in the mix. Let me give you the scenario that we're talking about here. One, we have a mixture of gases. Gas A has a pressure of one atmosphere. Gas B has a pressure of one atmosphere. Gas C has a pressure of one atmosphere. What is the total pressure of the gases in the mix? Okay. Is that easy? Now, funny side story for you. There are folks who say I'm intimidating. I mean, to personally, how could you be intimidated by somebody who wears a bandana? But anyway, there are people who are intimidated by me. They told me this. And I don't want to intimidate you, but if you think I'm intimidating, you should have had my chemistry teacher. My chemistry teacher was Miss Van Cleve. Now, it goes with this problem. You'll get my story. It's kind of funny. Mrs. Van Cleve, she's still alive. She looks the same as she did when I had her 20-some-odd 30 years ago. She would always wear, every day she wore button-up shirts like a man, like men's shirts, and ties. Now, she was not gay. She was straight. She had kids. She was a normal person, sort of. But she was very, very strict and intimidating to certain people. But she also had a funny side. Do you all know who Tom Selleck is? You ever heard of Tom Selleck? He's on, is it Blue Bloods? It's a TV, he's got a big mustache, and he does a lot of voiceovers. He was on what? Friends. He was on Friends? Yeah, he yeah, was Monica's voiceover. Oh, my gosh. Richard Byrne. <laughs> Tom Selleck? Maybe I have the wrong person. Yeah. Who's it's the same person with the mustache. Yeah. Old? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he was older he than looks her like in the show. A whole lot older. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Whoa. Okay, that's 
News to me now. I'm, I'm in the know with friends. Wow. Okay, well, anyway, Magnum P.I. was the show that I knew him from. Okay, want to make Whoa, that's like blowing me away now. That, okay, so anyway, Ms. Van Cleve liked Tom Selleck, Magnum P.I. back in our day. All right, so in her classroom, she had a poster. This is how crazy she was. She was just funny, but she was very, you think I'm intimidating? She was intimidating. Yet, she had this poster over here, and I found out just recently, actually, the reason for the poster was there was a hole in the concrete wall, and I didn't even know that was why the poster was there. But there was a poster of Tom Selleck, big, on the back of the room in the high school classroom back in the lab area. And you know how you have those bubbles where, um, the speaking bubbles? You know what I'm talking about, like on a cartoon? Yeah, yeah. The little speaking bubbles? Somebody had drawn in the speaking bubble, and her name was Doris. Her name was Doris Van Cleef. And it said, Doris, baby, I've come to erase your board. And that's what she had in the back of her classroom. But this woman wore a man's tie and was like really, really strict. And to give you an idea of her intimidation and things she would say, a problem like this, she would say kiss. This is a kiss problem. Now, does anybody know what kiss stands for when it comes to and she would say exactly that. Keep it simple, stupid. That's what she would say. That is so funny you knew that part. Most people don't ever say the stupid part, but she did. That's what Ms. Van Cleef said. So she would say, keep it simple, stupid. So if you think I'm intimidating, let's, let me have you find Ms. Van Cleef. What's funny is I use a lot of the same things she taught me with you guys, like the adic itis and Hofbrinkle and all those things, those are from her. That's how I learned them. So, but anyway, this is a keep it simple problem, okay? Do this problem. And please don't be intimidated by me. That's exactly what you do. That's exactly what you do. Kiss. <laughs> So what do you get? 761 millimeters of mercury. 761 millimeters of mercury. So the total pressure is 761 millimeters of mercury. Now, unfortunately, we do have some folks who always will fuss at me when they see a question on sapling or on the test that might, it might be worded like this. The total pressure of a mixture of gases is 761 millimeters mercury. Carbon dioxide is 30 millimeter mercury. Oxygen is 118 millimeter mercury. Nitrogen is 563 millimeters mercury. What is the pressure of water? And they'd be like, you said it was going to be easy and all we had to do was add them up. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Think a little bit. You might have a problem like that. Okay. Just, you might have one. Now. Again, this is easy, but you do have to go a little step further. This question is very similar to the question, if I said, and this isn't true, but if I said, I weigh 100 pounds, 70% of me is water, the rest is muscle, how many pounds of water, how many pounds of muscle? 70 pounds water, 30 pounds muscle. Now, that's how simple that is. Do you know what to do? <coughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Come on. You're going to take 745 times 0 0.21. And then do the same thing again and again, and that gets you the partial pressure. When you're done, add them all up, and what should you have? Close to it, if not. Now, significant figures on this problem are terrible, so let me just tell you, round to three significant figures. Let's just round it to three significant figures. I'm going to tell you that on this problem. I don't want that to mess you up, so try it.
Has everybody signed in? I have 156 millimeter mercury, 581 millimeter mercury, and 7.45 millimeter mercury. Anyone else get those? Okay. Now, yes, if you round them, if I'm sorry, if you add them up, they don't equal exactly, but that's because of the rounding. If you had put everything to two places behind the decimal, you should find that it would. Questions on that? All right, let's flip it to the last page of these notes. And This is another little funny story. So, somebody told me that they think I am just so smart. Well, today they are going to get their bubble burst. Because you're going to get to find out what I thought, which was dumb. Okay? So this will break all intimidation about me. Read the question first. You've got to read the question. Okay, so me, I have a chemistry bachelor degree and I have a master's in chemistry. Do not have a PhD, won't ever have a PhD and that's okay. I have a minor in biology. My minor in undergraduate was biology, but it has been a very long time since I had a biology class. And I'm sure that I learned a lot in biology but I don't remember it and I never have taught it, so I don't, you don't use it, you lose it kind of thing, okay? Even though I'm alive and I know that's what biology is, I still didn't use it very much, so I don't remember it. So, to tell you my ignorance, the first time I read this question, I read this question and I'm like, huh? And I'm like, I had tons of huhs about this question. Because here's what I thought. I thought heart pumps blood, right? I knew that part. Heart pumps blood. Oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged in the lungs. Here's what I thought. I thought, breathe in, the air comes into my lungs, the oxygen is somehow 
transferred into the arteries and the heart pumps it back out of my body. So the oxygen blood is going out of my body from my heart through my arteries, then back through my veins coming into my heart, lungs, etc., was the dirty carbon dioxide blood. And I get to this question and I'm like, huh? You mean there's carbon dioxide and oxygen in the blood at the same time? I really thought that. I'm like, oh, interesting. Wow, okay, that's a new one on me. Then I keep reading and this memory comes back to me from elementary school gym class. Now, back in gym class in elementary school, we had it every day in the good old days. Unfortunately, you guys didn't. But Mr. Blue, Coach Blue, was our PE teacher and our coach. And I remember Coach Blue having kids do something that I finally figured out why he was having them do it when I finally got to the end of this problem and figured the problem out. Now, some of you know what I'm talking about, some of you don't yet. So let's go to the problem and figure it out. So you know what my own ignorance was. Now I do know that our body has oxygen and carbon dioxide in the blood at all times. Glad to know that, I didn't know it. So glad to know that. Now, I'm looking at this question. It says normal values are 100 millimeter mercury oxygen and 40 millimeter mercury carbon dioxide. And it tells us that a patient comes in agitated and hyperventilating. <laughs> They're breathing very rapidly, okay? And their oxygen is normal, but the partial pressure of CO2 is what? It's too low. First, let's answer why. Why do you think it's too low? They're blowing it all out. That's exactly right. They're exhaling too much CO2. This is where that aha moment came in. What's the possible fix? I remember Coach Blue. Go get a bag. Breathe in a bag. Go find him a bag. I never knew why you breathed in a bag. I thought that was the craziest thing in the world. Now I know why. Why? Why do you breathe in the bag? So you can rebreathe. You can rebreathe your CO2. So this was a huge, I mean, this question was like, the light bulbs just went off in my head when I read this question. So I love it when I can learn. So, now see, all intimidation factor is gone now, especially with the bandana today, okay? So, never have it again. But that doesn't mean take advantage of me, okay? I'll get mean. All right, so let's put the answer up here. Let's put the answer. So, what's going on? CO2 is low due to fast breathing and exhaling too much CO2. And the fix is breathe in a paper bag or your hands or something so you can rebreathe the CO2. I'm sure Coach Blue sometimes wanted a plastic bag, but he didn't. Been funny if he just slapped them, right? You see that in movies. That only happens in movies, though. So you don't have to tell me if you didn't know this. So just know that I didn't know it, but A is pretty cool. I was kind of happy to know this. It's one of those mysteries of childhood. You never know why they make them blow in a bag or breathe in a bag. And then all of a sudden you find out. All right, the last picture is from the McGraw-Hill book that most of the 109 teachers still use. I put this in probably because I was so excited that I learned something. And so I wanted just to kind of share more of my, my love for learning with you all. And I saw I put this nice, beautiful picture and description in. But I like this because, as you know, I like your body. Not, don't take that personally. But um, I love your body. Your body is awesome. All of our bodies are awesome. We are made just unbelievably well. 
And this is one example of that. And your lungs are overbuilt. It's pretty cool. You have over 1,500 miles of airways. I mean, is that just like, did, do you ever just like get blown away by stuff like that? I mean, that's incredible. That is incredible. 1,500 miles inside of here. I mean, that's, that's amazing. And it tells us that basically your lungs are overbuilt. And that's why those folks that um, smoke, which I'm not advocating, don't smoke, but those people who do smoke, they can do it and still survive because the lungs are overbuilt. Other things that are interesting, and you may know someone like this as well, but I know a young lady who's um, a little bit younger than you guys, and she was born with one lung. Now, when she was born as a baby, that was very, very critical. But as she grew, she could do normal, every, you know, just normal activity. She could swim. She ran cross country. She could do anything that she wanted to do like you and I can, and why? because our lungs are overbuilt, and so it's pretty incredible. Now, obviously, she should not ever smoke because she doesn't have that extra built-in, extra overbuilt. But it's pretty amazing how our body is made to compensate when we mess things up, like with smoking. It still can adjust to a certain degree, and that's pretty impressive. But this is also, again, like I said, probably what got me excited about this was, you know, I got this whole CO2 and O2 thing. A little lesson there, so I like that. But anyway, all right, that is the material for your test. That's the end of the material for your test. So what I asked you to do was bring the practice problems for test three to class. And this is what we will do for the remainder of our time together. So this is what it looks like. Practice problems for test three. Hopefully you have it. If you don't have it, then I would encourage you to do them with us, but don't necessarily take the time to write all the questions down. And let me tell you why I say that. If you take the time to write each of these questions down, then what's going to happen is you're going to get behind us. Now, that's okay, but there may be a point you want to stay caught up. This is on Blackboard under the Extra Practice Worksheets tab, and I would mentioned this last week. Just put a note, number the question in your, on your paper, and then go back later and write the question in. But let's go through these. First one is a very simple problem. Determine the molar mass of NaC2H3O2. So go ahead. I'm going to actually walk around a little bit and just kind of check on folks and see how they're doing with this. So please do it. Gavin, are you here today? Did everybody sign in? Can I let you look at this now so I don't forget? Vicki, yes. can you look at this now so I don't forget? Round to the hundredths place on mass, yes, always. When you pull it off the periodic table.
you should get 82.04 grams per mole. If you round correctly, that's what you should get. Keep going. Keep working on these, and I'm going to just kind of walk around. I'll tell you why you're off 22.99. Because that zero, yeah, mm -hmm. that zero does not go up. Raja, you want to go up front where you can see better? Or can On you see one? okay? Can you see okay? Uh, go up front. There's room up there. Go up there. There's seats over there. On this one, because chlorine only doubled the mass. That's right? correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. There's actually two right, very, very front. I'm listening. Yes, yes, you have to do significant figures. Yes. Yeah. Are you done, Vicki, or do you have more? Question? Okay. Thank you. When we're doing this problem, we know that we have to find the molar mass because the question asks for grams and we are given moles. Now some students got a little confused this morning because they said, well, why does it say molecules? It simply is telling you that this is a molecular compound. But it's not giving you the unit of molecules as a number. It's more than anything explaining these are glucose molecules. It's not any number you have to worry about. So you do not need Avogadro's number. If it had said 0.83 molecules, then yes. If it had said how many molecules, then yes. But it simply says how many grams, so that's your, who you're looking for. Moles is what you're given. And yes, they are molecules. So what do we start with? 0.83 moles, and then you use the molar mass. So 180.18 grams per one mole, moles cancel. And you do have to round properly to two significant digits, so your answer is what? 150 without a decimal. Yes or no? Yes, the question was on the next one, it says chlorine molecules. What does that mean? Cl2. So here it is important that it says molecules, just like it is there. Here it makes more of a difference because you have to know it's not chlorine atoms. If it just said chlorine, then you wouldn't know, really. And I wouldn't give you one like that. If it said just chlorine, then you're not going to know is it atoms or molecules. Theoretically, you would have to make the assumption it was molecules because chlorine cannot exist by itself. But I'm not going to do that to you. I'm not going to say just chlorine.
so you're not distracted. Man, you're totally wired, aren't you? Save time by putting just the important stuff and come back later and put the rest of it in, okay? Just so that you can move as fast as we're going. save you time. She is a smart aleck. She's done that to you. She's done that to you how many times in my class? So what's my next step? One mole on top and what? 70.90 grams. Now I'm hearing something I didn't know what I was hearing, so I'm going to address it right here. Everybody with me? Okay. That is not the final answer. That's what it made it look like, but that's not. The final answer is what? Good, and why do you have to have all those? Because it is four significant digits. Good. Okay. Are these making sense? Okay. I had a revelation on a problem today, and I didn't know it was a problem until we got to these two. And let me show you where the problem was. And listen to me because I'm betting there are some of you that have the same problem. When you are finding the mass, if you have parentheses, it is two times what's in parentheses. Don't worry about the mg. It's just one mg. So it's one mg, which is the 24.31 plus what? Two times 1.01 .01 plus two times 12.01 .01 plus six times 16.00. More than one person asked me that. And in this size room, I'm sure there's more than one person who has that question. Do we need Avogadro's number on this one? Yes. All right, do it. They are included in significant digits. You should have put 70.90. Anytime you pull it off the periodic table, it's two places after the decimal. So Avogadro's number, you would round Three. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
What do you get? Now then, if you did not get times 10 to the 23rd, then yell and let me help you. Okay. No, because Avogadro's number counts. Which is why on that practice worksheet on Blackboard, I told you to pay attention to our significant figures compared to theirs because we use 6.02. I think they use 6.022 or 023, and that makes a difference. So depending on which book or source you use for Avogadro's number, the significant figures will be changed. Ours are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, so it's 3. Good question. Did everybody get times 10 to the 23rd? That's my important thing right now because I found people not getting that. You got, okay, then I bet did you go times 10 somewhere. Let's do it. Plug it in. E E. There you go. That's what it was. Okay. Hit E E. Anytime it's a number in scientific notation already, then right here you hit that E E key. Don't hit times ten. Just hit E E. Okay. Do you have this one? What goes on top? So 78.01 grams, one mole on bottom, moles cancel. And what's your answer then? 197 grams? Good. Yes or no? All right, keep going. Keep going. Do these last two problems. Guys, if you're ca trying to catch up, stop and, and go to the next one. All these answers are on Blackboard already, okay? I want us to get to this point in the back page together, so if, if you're not with us, then skip one and, and go ahead and get with us. But try them before I do. You will learn if you do it on your own, not waiting for me to do it.
What do you get for moles of four kilograms? 28 moles. Good. Any questions on that one? All right, have we got the next answer too? What's my next step? That got us into moles. Then what? Why is it 28.02 grams per one mole? Because it's in two. And then my last step is milligrams. And your final answer, 489 milligrams. Yes or no? If you do not get 489 milligrams, but instead you get something that's like times 10 to the da-da-da, raise your hand and let me come help you on your calculator. All right, I'll be there in just a minute. Use the EE -E key. Make sure you're using the EE -E key. You're not, but clear it out. You're using the caret key. Yeah. Use the EE -E key. So do it again. Mm -hmm. okay. Second function, yeah, do it again. Okay. If you didn't get the 489, then go back and redo it using the EE -E key. Not the caret key, but the EE -E key. Don't hit times 10. So you hit 1.05 EE -E 22. No, 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 you don't, you don't, you just do 1.05, then hit that second EE. -E. No, you have to do second. Okay. It's a, because it's in yellow. There you go. Sure. And then hit 22. Divided by. Second. Second. why I like the cheap or the other little calculator because it's a one button thing. Now 28.02, good. And then there you go. Okay. Did everybody get that? Still not getting it? I got 4.89. Okay. How is it 4.89? Clear it all again. That's wrong. Use the EE -E key. For what? For times 10 to the 22nd. Yeah, so you go 1.05. No, 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 no. Clear it all out. I Clear did. it all out. It's 1.05, then you do the second EE -E key. Now 22. 22. That means 1.05 times 10 to the 22nd. So you don't have to put times. Don't put times. No. Now then, keep going. Okay? Yeah. Did everybody get it? Remember when you're plugging into your calculator that you do not hit times 10 and you don't use the caret key when it's like this. Use the EE -E key. And it is the second function on your X2S's. All right, this one, in balancing it, is one of the harder ones you've dealt with. I want all of you to try it. I want every one of you to try to balance this equation. You can get it. Did you get that one? The number? 489. Did you get this right? Okay, you're trying to balance it? So you're stuck, right? When you're stuck, think about... You've, you've got everything but oxygen, right? Actually, no, you don't. Look at your hydrogens. So what do you need to put in front? Or oh, that is right, isn't it? That's a three, isn't it? I apologize. That's a three. Okay. Now then, so the everything, only thing not done is oxygen, right? 
So when you get to that point on any equation where you get this much and you're like, I don't know what to do, go back and whatever you assumed was one, make it two, and then double everything else and check it. So put a two there. Double, that's right, that's right, yes. All right, this is what I imagined you were doing, and this is what's happened. You started off and you said four Ps, so you came over here and you put a four. And you said four Ps, four Ps. Is that right? Then you said 10 O's plus four is 14, and you said seven plus... 16, and then you just said, I have no idea. <coughs> if that happens, then just say, okay, I can't do oxygen right now. I'm going to skip it. And then go to hydrogen and say, one hydrogen over here I have. So I'm going to put a 12 here. And then you say, but that's too big. I know some of you are saying, well, that's too big of a number. No, it's not. It's okay. Then you say that's 12 chlorine, so what do I put here? Six, so that made 12 chlorine. Now I'm going to go back and compare again. So four Ps, four Ps, 10 Os plus what? 48 is 58. And over here, six times seven is what? Plus... 16 is what? 58. Now, I just told you wrong a few minutes ago. You had it. I thought you were stuck. You had it. You had it. Here's what we were discussing. I had told him if he couldn't get it balanced, and this is a good trick. If you can't get something balanced, then go back and whatever you thought was one to start with, put a two there, and then double everything else. So what he ended up with was two, 24, 12, and eight. But then what should have happened? Reduce it all. Okay? Does that make sense? Now, can we reduce ours? No. Why not? Because this is one. This is one. Don't think that that's two. That's one. Okay? I didn't mean to mess you up. You got it. You can only reduce if they all can be reduced. But this is one. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. Question that I know some of you are thinking right now is, this is all in words. And I agree, it is all in words. So let me answer this question before you ask it. I'll ask the question. Are we going to have to do something like that on the test? No, on the test, you are not going to have to write the formulas and then balance. I will give you the formulas and you balance. Well, why'd you put that on here? Because this is practice. So, can you write the formula for chromium-3 carbonate? You should be able to. What is it? Chromium-3 is what? Plus 3. What's carbonate? Negative 2. So, what is chromium-3 carbonate's formula? Cr2, parentheses, CO3, parentheses, 3. Good. And then chromium-3 again is plus 3, and this is negative 2. So what is our formula now? Cr2O3 plus what's carbon dioxide? CO2. Now you should have been able to do that without me doing it for you. 
but on your test you would have something like this already and then your problem would be to balance it. So now balance it. What do you get? If this were a multiple choice question and I said, what are the coefficients for the following, what would you say? I know we don't write one, but what would you say? One, one, three. Good job. Yes or no? Okay. All right. Flip the page and we are doing stoichiometry. Again, let me alleviate your fears. On the test, I will give you the balanced equation that you have to use for the stoichiometry problem. But because part of your test is balancing equations, I'm saying let's balance the equation. So balance the equation. Go ahead and do the stoichiometry. If you have that balance, do the stoichiometry. What are your coefficients? 1, 3, 2, 2. Good. Okay. These, whoops. These two questions go with that balanced equation. All these go together, okay? On the first problem, do you need the periodic table? No, why not? You're not messing with mass. I like how she said that. You're not messing with mass at all, so you don't need the periodic table. In fact, all you need is the given and then what's your immediate next step? Mole to mole ratio. Guys, where does the mole to mole ratio come from? Where on the balanced equation? The numbers of the balanced equation. The big numbers are the moles. So 3.64 moles of C2H4, then what? What goes on top? Two moles of who? CO2, what goes on bottom? One mole of C2H4. That's where that came from. That's where that came from. 
And the answer is 7.28 moles of CO2. The mistakes that I have seen, students get lazy and they don't put who this is. If you don't put who that is, then you're not going to know what to put here. Somebody, I don't know who it was, doesn't matter, sent me an email, which I was thankful to get an email question. I like to answer your questions. And they sent me an email and they said, I can't figure this problem out. And they sent me a picture of what they had done. And what they had done is put one mole over one mole here because they had not looked at their balanced equation. And I think the reason that occurred was because the other examples that we've done have been one mole over one mole. So the theory was, well, everything's one mole over one mole. Well, no, that's just what those equations were. Does this make sense that this is where those coefficients come from or where the moles come from? Does that make sense? You've got to put your units and who you are. All right, do the next problem. I'm going to walk around a little bit. Do the next problem. What do you think? Yes. Why? H2O is... You do not use the coefficient for anything other than the mole to mole ratio. So for the mass, you just simply look at it as 1 H2O. So 2 times 1.01 plus 16. That's a good question, and I've seen that done, but you ask it well. That was a good question. I would make sure you know that you're referring to that, okay, because you don't have this one balanced. Does that make sense? Okay. As soon as you are in moles, what do you think the next step is? No, because who do you want grams of? You're in who? O2. What's the only way to get out of O2? What's find that? The grams of it? No, because you're still O2 if you find the grams of it. A What's the? Ratio? There you go. So that just gives it um, ratio. immediate. That's exactly right. So using that. So yes. Put three moles O2, not just O2. Three moles of O2 is equal to two moles. Uh, but but you're not looking for C, you're looking for H2O. Oh, you were right. Sorry. H2O. I didn't realize it was two also. Sure. Now then, then, does that make sense? So then I would put one mole. Yes. H2O. Yes. 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 Grams? Yes. So since there's two moles here, I wouldn't multiply. No, because three. you're taking care of it here. That's where you take care of this. Okay. So then I would just... It. Exactly. Anytime you're in moles, your immediate step is mole to mole ratio for stoichiometry. So I have to get out of moles in order, in, in order to get to grams. And well, to you have to get into the new substance. And the only way to get into a new substance is with that mole to mole ratio. Does that make sense? The mole to mole ratio is, is the, you know, the mole to mole ratio is kind of like that ding, 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 ding step because it allows you to get from one substance to another substance. So I can say they're equal even if they're on the opposite side. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, because remember me doing the crazy thing, how many people are behind there? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter which side we're on. It's still a ratio. <laughs> so this is 1 to 3, 3 to 2, 2 to 1, 2 to 2, Three to one. Do you see what I'm saying? So Anything. It's not saying they're equal, it's saying they're just a ratio exactly. Exactly. Okay. Just like I can say 
Five fingers is equal to one person. Our brain wants to say, well, they're not equal. But if you saw five fingers, I said five fingers equals one person, didn't I? I'm a one-handed man. <laughs> if you saw ten fingers and that's all you saw, you would say one person. Do you see what I'm saying? Even though you, what we're trying to do and what you're doing and what I do at the same thing is they are equal for this equation. But you and I are thinking, but they're not the same. The mass wouldn't be the same. They're not the same. But again, you can't say ten fingers are the same as one person. But if you see ten fingers, you know there had to be one person that went with them. So it's the same kind of, they are the sameness as that's the sameness. Two eyeballs, one person. They're not the same, but... Exactly. Exactly. And it's that mold to mold ratio that allows you to flip between the two. Right? Yes. And this is the problem. <laughs> don't I, me this out. is the problem I was thinking about when I was helping him about you have to double it. And I messed him up because I was thinking of that problem. No, you got it. You got it. You got it. That's the hard one. You got it, though. Woo, baby. Look at you. Go, girl. Yep. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. You want to teach? All right, so 12 moles of O2. What's my next step? Mole to mole ratio. Do I need the grams of O2? Not O2 I don't need grams of because it's the moles that allow me to convert to another substance. So now I'm ready for my mole to mole ratio. I get 3 moles of O2. What am I trying to find? H2O. So what's that? Two moles of H2O. So moles of O2 cancel. Two moles of H2O. Now what do I put on top here? 18.02 grams. One mole. And that is H2O. And you should get three significant digits. 144 grams of water. Yes or no? I'm not hearing anything. That doesn't sound like yes to me. Did we get this? Does it make sense? What's wrong? Got it? Okay. Balance the next equation. Balance the next equation. And I was going to say something if anybody asked me, but you didn't. Can I, I'm going to say everybody, okay? Guys, on that last problem... Nobody mentioned it, but both of those two problems said the same thing toward the end or, or said something similar. Do you see at the end of both of those problems where it says excess oxygen and excess C2H4? That is the same as me saying this scenario, okay? I'm going to make brownies tonight, but I have a whole dozen eggs. I'm only going to make one bag of brownie mix, so I just need two eggs. What could I say about my eggs? I have excess eggs. What that means is, don't worry about it. You got enough. You've got plenty. It doesn't matter. You just know that it's not affecting you in your product because you have enough. That's what that's saying. Okay? This is the one that I was telling you to do that on more ago. The other one, you had it balanced. Did you know you had it balanced? I kind of thought so. But it I was, and I messed you up, and I apologize. Now then, what you and I were just talking about, that's mm -hmm. what you're going to do here. Because what you found out here now, 9 plus 16 makes 25. There's no way to ever make that 25. So you now do what I told you on the other one to do, and I'm sorry. That's what I was thinking of 
on that other one, and that's my fault. I messed you up. So on this head dual blackboard, do you just always give us what R is? I will give you what R is. Uh, let me rephrase that. I will give you both R values. I'll give you both of those. But you have to figure out which one you need. So in other words, I'll give you those two numbers. Why did you use that one in this equation? Sorry. Well, I gave it to you here. Yeah. But on your test, I'll give you both of these. You'll have to figure out the one you need. How, do you know How will you know? Because this is in millimeter mercury and this is in atmosphere. Mm -hmm. This is in atmosphere. But we don't need to memorize these numbers. No, I will give them to you. Pr print it out again. I fixed it today. Oh. Oh. The only way I check my answer is then um, you have like a different one. So I know. Just... You can do both of them then. You have two problems to do now. Oh, okay. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. I fixed it today. Right before I came to class, I fixed it. You were on the ball though. I'm making a game. Good for you. It's for class. Good for you. Guys, if you all printed the answer key for this out before like an hour or less, like 10 minutes before class, you printed the wrong one. So go back and reprint the answer key. I fixed it today. Because the answer key has a different equation than this, but I fixed it to this one today. Have you got it balanced? Have you got the equation balanced? I kind of gave away my trick a few minutes ago on the other one because I was thinking of this problem instead of that one earlier. So here's what happened. You came along through here and you put, a, put an 8 there and you put a 9 there. Is that what you did first? And then you saw 9 plus 16 is 25. There's no way on earth you're ever going to get an odd number to equal an even number. That's when I meant to tell you to do the little other trick I said, which is what? Double it. So then you double, 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 and now what goes here? 25. And don't be afraid if it's a big number. If, you, if it's right, it's right. So then look at those again, and you'll see that is correct. So it's 2, 25, 16, and 18. Now, regarding this question, this is a beautiful question. Why is it a beautiful question? Because you have to do a bunch of stuff that we've learned starting with the first day of class called dimensional analysis. And we get to use density as a conversion factor, which is always exciting. So you better start on the far left-hand side of your paper because it takes the whole paper. What do you start with? 23.6 gallons. Now, the whole time at the beginning of the problem, we're dealing with octane. So I'm actually going to put it at the top to avoid having to take the space up to write it each time. Because what do we have to do to begin with before we can convert this to carbon dioxide? We have to get it into grams so that we can get it into moles. So then we can use the... You follow? So this first part is simply getting it into grams using density as a conversion factor. Try it. Go back, find your conversion factor sheet if you don't remember how many quarts in a gallon and milliliters in a quart. That's the information you're going to need. Thank you. 
If you have this one, then just finish up the gas walls. You got it. The long one, that's what I was looking at. Man, I wish I could write like you. You should do my answer keys. That's like awesome. She's a lot neater than I am. Good job. I don't know where to go after this though. Okay, that's all right. You, this is great. This proves you've learned something. That's awesome. <laughs> I love to see that. Now, think about its stoichiometry. So just pretend that I had given you a number in grams to start with. Okay. Where would you go? And also put up here who this is. The whole time that CH8 or C8H18. So just pretend I gave you grams of C8H18. Where would you go? Molar mass, then mole to mole ratio. That's exactly see, that's the same thing as what you've been doing. That's exactly right. Let me tell you what they are if you can't find it. Which one are you looking for? Four quarts and a gallon. Four quarts is a gallon and 946 milliliters in a quart. To help you? Let me tell you all those too so you can just write them down, jot them down. It's um, four, or she's got them right there. Four quarts and a gallon and 946 milliliters in a quart. Good job. Good, 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 good. Perfect. Now, what is all of this? Who is all of that? Who, what substance? Good. Put that somewhere up here. That all of that is octane. So now, and I'd put a line so you know all of that's octane. Now then, this problem at this point is as if I just said, I gave you X number of grams of octane. Now how many pounds of carbon dioxide are going to be emitted? So it's a stoichiometry problem. To what? What, steps are you, what step are you going to do now? Grams to moles. So just keep going. Keep going. Don't find the answer. Keep going. Because, and now start putting that unit up there so that when you get to the mole to mole ratio, it'll scratch off like it's supposed to. Okay? Good, good. This is good, except right here, no. Because who is all of this? Octane. Now treat it as if you were given grams of octane. Which one of these is octane? C8H18. Yeah. So all of this is octane. So now treat it as if you stop right there. You don't need pounds of octane, so that's not right. This is grams of octane. Now if it were a normal stoichiometry problem and I gave you grams of octane, where would you go next? After grams, you go to what? So you go get the molar mass of C8H18. And then mole to mole ratio, and then you're in CO2. So we'll put the grams of octane, and then equals one mole. That's exactly right. And then it'll be mole to mole. Exactly. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Now, make sure at that point you start putting who you are, okay, so that you don't mess up who you are. Good. Right here. All of this is right. Okay. Now here, this is not. What you've done at this point is you've gotten the pounds of octane. We don't want pounds of octane. We want pounds of CO2. So erase that. Up above all that, put octane. So like just put a line squiggly or something so that you know that that is octane. Yeah, just kind of like I did up there. So C8, just so that you know, so you didn't have to write it each time is the reason I do that. 
So that's octane. Now then, at this point, that is as if, this problem now is as if I gave you grams of octane and said how many pounds of CO2 are produced. So in order to do stoichiometry, what do we have to be in to get that? There you go. So how do you get moles of something that's in grams? Not yet. Molar mass from the periodic table. Okay. So go find on the periodic table C8H18, and that's your next step. And then you'll be doing the mole to mole ratio. Good. Um, so on this one, do we have to change that to ATM and no. that to liters? No, it doesn't matter because the whole problem is in this same exactly. So I can still find the volume in milliliters? In milliliters, absolutely. That's, that's correct. The okay. only time you have to have it in liters is for PV equals NRT. Okay. Okay. No, but that's up there. So if you cross that out, that's Hold on a minute. Is that all the way through? Except for your mole to mole ratio, yes. It would be 16? It would be whatever the balance equation says it is. So 16 moles of CO2. So that would be 16. Correct. And, and then, then that, that would change. No, no, no. That's just for one mole of, o, of CO2. That's right. Your mole to mole ratio is what takes care of the balanced equation. Okay. So now what's this though? Is that one mole of octane? There you go. Now plug it all through. But right there, what I just could I just do times eight? Yes. To simplify it? Sure, if you want know. to, but know. it won't matter. All you'd have to do to plug it in is 23.6 times 4 times 946 times this divided by this times this divided by okay. that times divide. Okay. But, I could but you could. You could. But if you do that, then write this first and then scratch it out. Okay. So that when you come back to study, you, know. you don't wonder where did 8 come from. Okay. You see what I'm saying? That's what you would wonder later is where in the world did 8 come from. Is that correct? That would be 2 and 16? Yes, 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 yes. All right, guys, let me do this one for you. Almost. This is pounds of octane. We don't want pounds of octane, so stop right there. And then we'll go from there. All right, so you guys, I was, am very pleased to see that you can do the beginning dimensional analysis. After you did that, you got a little off a few of you. So let's figure this one out. Gallons, one gallon, four quarts. I might get intimidating. All right, we start with gallons. Convert gallons to quarts, quarts to milliliters. Why? So that we can use density. 0 0.7025 grams over one milliliter. Milliliters cancel. I saw this on a lot of papers. Wonderful. Because this is what we did early on, I'm glad you can do it. That's great. This is old material. I expect you to know how to do this. This is grams of octane. At this point, this is grams of octane. The question asks for pounds of carbon dioxide. Here's what some of you wanted to do. You wanted to do grams to pounds. If you had stopped there, what are you in? Pounds of octane. The question didn't ask for pounds of octane. It asked for pounds of CO2. The only way to convert one substance to another is with what? Mole to mole ratio. So that's where you should have said Oh, I'm in grams now, I can get moles and then do the mole to mole ratio to get CO2. So you go to the periodic table, C8H18 is 114.26 grams 
for every one mole of C8H18. This is molar mass. Then you go to the mole to mole ratio and you get that from the balanced equation. That's where this comes from. So on top we put 16 moles of CO2. On bottom we put 2 moles of C8H18. Yes or no? Does that make sense? Go ahead. I love her. I really do love her. About 10 minutes ago, I said, if, listen to me, about 10 minutes ago, I said, if you printed the answer key off before, about 10 minutes before class, it doesn't have the right answer key for this question. And see, you wanted to leave. Aren't you glad you stayed? Print the answer key off again. Okay? All right, so we've got moles of CO2. Now what? So what goes on top? 44.01 grams of CO2 in one mole of CO2. And now 454 grams in one pound of CO2. And your answer is 426 pounds CO2. Yes or no? Does this make sense? Okay. Now then, the rest of these are gas laws. We have done gas laws last day. If you want to stay and do these, then I will stay with you. If you want to go, you may go. I have, before you get excited, I have already sent an email about five minutes before class started that said to you a very little snippet about what was on your test. I sent it to both classes. That's what I did this morning. That's what I'm doing for you. So that's, I'm not going to talk anymore about the test. That's it. It's on Monday. Okay? I will see you Monday.